This is News from the Water and I am Peter Underwood. Stoppages galore as boats return to the water. More and more boats are venturing out onto the waterways as the lockdown eases and school holidays approach and while some serious system collapses have now been put right in the Midlands, Canal and River Trust and its contractors are still struggling elsewhere. This week's system closures particularly affected northern waters, with the air and colder affected by a major breach before Christmas last year. There's still no reopening date for the section of the uh, canal affected from Pollington Lock to Rawcliffe Bridge, which has now been shut for seven months. But the linked stretch of the new junction canal between um, Sykehouse Lock and Went End Aqueduct has been open once a day at 10 a.m. for access through Pollington Lock and, Syke and Sykehouse Lock. It's worth remembering that this is one of the few commercial waterways in the UK. Now, still up north, Lock 1, Tinsley, on the Sheffield and Tinsley, is to be shut on June the 16th for uh, inspection and repair works. Uh, which will be carried out on the upstream sluices and then on the Leeds and Liverpool. Bank Newton locks were shut on June the 9th after lock 37 failed. The closure of this major cross Pennine route is described as ongoing with an update on Monday. Kings Road lock on the Wakefield branch of the Air and Calder shut on Wednesday with a damaged upper lock gate. An assessment will be undertaken to see if the lock can be reopened on a restricted basis with assisted passage, but only for narrowboats. Ripon Basin, the BWML marina, is completely cut off by the closure of Oxclose Lock. Back in mid-May, the timber lock floor is damaged, exposing a large void. On June the 6th, CRT said they were using a workboat to bring in 100 tonnes of gravel to the lock and that its grouting contractor will be on site early next week and it will take up to another six weeks to complete, though this is dependent on the site not flooding. Elsewhere in Yorkshire, Selby Swing Bridge has been unable to swing since mid-March and CRT has said building a footbridge uh, and removing the road bridge to reopen the, might, the navigation there might happen in mid to late June. Um, South Gunthorpe Lock on the River Trent broke on June the 4th with a broken paddle. Plans to reopen on the 8th were abandoned and now there's no reopening date as CRT says repair works were started yesterday but the fault is bigger than they expected. And also down in the Midlands, Saltersford Lock on the River Weaver has been shut since May the 28th in an ongoing closure after the collar broke on the lock. On June the 4th, CRT said it anticipated it would take five weeks to fix. Further south on the Kennet and Avon, there was another failure at Saltford Lock. It has damaged gates that CRT says may be fixed by June the 15th. And at Dashwood Lock 37 on the Oxford Canal, uh, a stoppage on June the 4th was finally fixed six days later on June the 10th. While at Clitheroe's Lock on the Grand Union, a ground paddle that broke on June the 3rd has meant the lock is now manned between 7.30 and 10 a.m. Monday to Friday. Otherwise, the navigation will remain closed until more repairs are undertaken. And Hampstead Road Lock on the Regent's Canal will be closed for a couple of days on June the 16th to reline and repair the top gates to reduce leakage. And finally, the prize for the longest stoppage goes to the Springs branch of the Leeds and Liverpool in Skipton, which was closed in January 2016, more than five years ago, after a rock fall. In August last year, CRT said that this section of navigation remains closed and it was continuing to liaise with relevant parties to work towards a resolution. 
There we are. Six years and counting. Carnarvon River Trust challenged over more altered figures. Now, Tom Deards, Head of Legal and Governance Services and Company Secretary for the Carnarvon River Trust, has now confirmed that he made unauthorised changes to the annual report and that they were discussed with the Chief Executive, Richard Parry, on the 24th of November last year and that both the Chair Alan Layton and Deputy Chair Dame Jenny Abramsky were notified orally. CRT have now told the Charity Commission that it will remove the altered annual report from its website and replace it with the approved annual report. It has also asked the Charity Commission if the altered report showing on the Commission's website can be replaced with the approved version showing as filed on the 22nd of December. Now, despite those ch uh, changes, the Charity Commission is pursuing an investigation into the way CRT has misled the government and the Commission itself. Now, Alan Richards, the waterways researcher who discovered the fiddling of the records, has demanded that Mr Deards also comes clean about other altered figures and the exact nature of the involvement of the Trust's Chair, Alan Layton. In an open letter to Mr Deards, he says, You were entrusted by the Board of Trustees to file its approved annual report with Companies House and the Charity Commission. As you admit, you broke that trust by conspiring with your Chair, Deputy Chair and Chief Executive to file an altered report on your website and with the Charities Commission. You have now compounded the matter by failing to disclose to the Charity Commission and myself the full nature of your chair's involvement in this matter, that you altered visitor satisfaction figures as well as heritage figures, the names of those that were complicit in altering visitor satisfaction figures. I note also, that you have also failed to address the possible outcomes that this maladministration will have on DEFRA funding and public perception. Please respond within five working days. Based on your response I will decide if I need to take THE matter further or leave it to the Charity Commission who are carrying out their OWN investigation. Meanwhile, CRT indulges in some curious behaviour. Canal and River Trust has been almost playful. Away from the serious business of major stoppages, dubious behaviour and dealing with a major revolt over its terms and conditions, of course. On Facebook, on Facebook it was teasing us with this. On Twitter, it has been uh, boasting about the idea of towpath speed cameras to dissuade cyclists, posting a picture of one sighted outside its Cambrian Wharf office in central Birmingham. As many more realistic people pointed out, uh, there will be a lot of cyclists who the, see the speed indicator as more of a challenge than a warning, and it may not be long before a league table appears online with the fastest speeds through Cambrian Wharf. Legal letter brings a minor retreat. And back in the real world, Canal and River Trust has made an initial response to the National Bargy Travellers Association's pre-action protocol letter challenging some of the new boat licence terms and conditions. The Trust has refused a full pause in implementing the new boat licence terms and conditions as the, letter, as the original letter asked, but it has stated instead that it will not enforce the disputed terms until the 16th of June. CRT's solicitors say, Our client does not agree to your request that the terms and conditions which came into force on the 1st of June 2021 should be stayed until at least 14 days after our client's substantive response. However, while it is considering the points raised, our client has confirmed it will not take enforcement action in relation to the specific terms from the terms and conditions which are referred to in your letter until it has sent its substantive response to your pre-action letter. For the avoidance of doubt, our client has confirmed it will not take enforcement action in relation to Clause 5.1, Clause 5.4 and Clause 10.10, Clause 10.11 until Wednesday the 16th of June 2021. 
Uh, the NBTA expects to receive a substantive response from CRT the day before that, leaving as little time as possible, of course, for coherent action. A trust cancels online discussion of London proposals. After an earlier online debate about its proposals for London's waterways, in which CRT's Ros Daniels attracted widespread criticism for referring to London voters as these people, the Trust has backed out of another potential clash at the very last minute. On the very day of a proposed webinar, it decided it didn't want to talk about managing boats on London's busy waterways, as the title had it, until the autumn. CRT says that uh, after it published proposals for water safety zones on the Lee, it is now focusing on carrying out further engagement uh, with stakeholders on the Lee uh, before it agrees a way forward. And it wants to go, uh, it wants to conclude this before it publishes further proposals to manage boats in London. It now says a further discussion of options will be published in autumn 2021 with the aim of starting a formal consultation before the end of the year. Apparently, uh, this will avoid carrying out a big consultation during the summer months when many people would prefer uh, to be out enjoying the waterways. It fails to mention that the protests about its proposals continue to grow with another cavalcade of boats planned for the next weekend. That's it. More next week.